Hello and welcome to the Car Care Not Channel. In today's video, we're going to be continuing on our series about how Toyota hybrids work. In today's video, we're going to be focusing on the true brains of the operation, the inverter. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's dig right into this guy. So the inverter, officially called the inverter with converter assembly, internally called just inverter or very expensive nightmare. They rarely go bad and most of the stuff that makes them go bad is covered by Toyota for an extended policy. However, let's talk about this guy. Let's see how is this the brain of the operation. Well, we've talked about the battery. Power comes from the battery, let's say 200 volts DC, direct current, comes from the battery, comes directly here. And where I'm gonna go over the cables that connect to this, the scary orange cables. Now, 200 volts or so come here. There is a part that is called the booster. This booster, based on the demand of the hybrid system, could boost that 200 volts all the way to 650 volts or anywhere in between as needed to give the to give the motors inside the transmission we'll talk about the transmission in a future video but to give the motors that drive the car more power when needed so that's the first function of this of this inverter the second function of this inverter is the motors that drive the car run on ac or alternating current so this guy will boost the voltage, let's say it's boosting it to 650 or going full throttle. It's gonna boost it to 650 DC, direct current, and then there's a part inside of here that's gonna change that voltage to AC, alternating current, and then send it to the motor. Pretty cool how, how it, does, it could do all that in like split seconds. And then there's another part here that's called the DC-DC converter, that takes the 200 volts DC out of the battery, steps it down to 14 volts or right around so to charge our little 12 volt battery. So effectively, the alternator is here. It just doesn't do the conventional thing that a normal alternator in a non-hybrid car does. This is probably the coolest part of this car. And we're, today we're looking at a third generation Prius I will show you how this guy looks on the inside. Very complicated looking guy, isn't it? Now, also what this does is, it supplies power to the AC compressor. AC compressor runs off, it's a normal high voltage AC, AC compressor, so it also supplies power to that. Now, again, following the, the theme of this series, where we're keeping things simple, but they're actually very complicated. This guy does a lot more, and it controls a lot more things. Let's talk about the hybrid cooling system, or the additional cooling system that hybrid cars have when compared to gasoline cars. Now, this has a lot to do with the inverter-converter assembly. The coolant, circulates, uses a, an electric pump that takes the coolant from the reservoir, passes it through the inverter-converter assembly and specifically a part called the IPM or the Intelligent Power Module, which is essentially the guy that does most of the work inside here. Um, that part gets very hot. It actually has a huge heat sink underneath it. And you have to, when we remove these, and we do remove these to replace them, they use a specific grease, just like a computer CPU, if you would. It uses specific grease to dissipate heat. And the coolant passes through it to cool it, then it goes to the radiator, then it comes back. There's an electric pump, circulates everything to keep everything within, within the appropriate temperature that it needs. If this thing over, overheats, 
the car will start shutting down and eventually shut down completely because it, it won't risk frying this guy. This guy is very expensive and this whole inverter is extremely expensive, possibly more expensive than a hybrid battery. They rarely go bad and the most, most of the problems that they have has been covered either by a recall or a campaign or an extended policy because if this guy goes bad, the car shuts down and that could be a safety hazard. So that about covers it for the main functions of this guy and the cooling system. Let's talk about the cables or the scary orange cables. So there are a bunch of orange cables connected to this inverter. One of them comes from the high voltage battery. And this guy only has two wires inside of it. It's just positive and ground or positive and negative. There are also other two other wires and one of those th two wires go directly to the transmission for the two, two electric motors. We're going to cover more on those electric motors when we talk about the transmission. But those have three wires each because it's an AC, it's a three phase AC motor. Pretty cool stuff. So I will take, and there's also another, another high voltage wire goes to the compressor, AC compressor. Let me take you on an aerial view and I'll point out some of the stuff and I'll show you how it's all oriented. Please do not try this at home. Do not remove this cover. I am trained to work on these systems and I'm aware of their dangerous, uh, dangers and the precautions you need to have when you work on them. So this is for demonstration purposes only. Please don't try this at home to keep so I can have the conscience that everybody is being safe. Let me take you over and show you how everything looks. All right, so here, here it looks. There's a cover that's missing and I'll show you something cool about that cover. So right here, this cable right here, this is the one that comes from the battery. You notice that it has two, these two bolts. This is what holds the, the two wires inside of it. Now these two right here, they have three bolts each. These go to the motors inside the transmission. Now, there's a cable right here, which has two bolts right there. That's the one for the compressor. And this here is the fuse. It's just a high voltage fuse. The way Toyota makes this, every time you pull this inspection cover, it's not an inspection cover actually, it's a cover to get these bolts loose once you've disabled the system. It actually has a safety pin on it. This is how safe Toyota are with these cars. Again, I don't encourage you to remove this cover on your Prius. This is just for demonstration. So there you have it, everybody. This is how this thing worked. This is how it looks. This is what's associated with it. And if somebody caught it, the coolant is low on this car and I gotta look to see what, what's leaking. Usually it's the radiator gets hit from a rock. If you didn't catch it though, go back in the footage and look at it if you saw it. Now, one thing I will mention about hybrids as an added bonus to this series, the Prius has always been the benchmark of hybrids. And if you want to see the new generation of hybrid systems, you always look at the new model Prius. This is a third generation Prius and this style inverter actually made its way to other models after the debut of this model in 2010. Before that, all the other hybrids, Camry, Highlander, used the technology from the previous Prius. So in 2016, when the fourth generation came out, it was the new hybrid system. The inverter was much smaller, it was different, it was wired different, it was made different, it was improved and, and done better. Then the other models started getting it. So w whenever you wanna see new hybrid technology that's completely different and new, look at the first, first year of the new generation Prius. It's, they usually always put their new technology in the first generation Prius, first year of the new generation of the Prius, and then it trickles down to other models because the Prius will always be the benchmark of hybrid technology. I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned something new. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and we'll see you in a future video.